somebody who don't believe anything. He said, you don't believe anything. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing. You don't believe anything. I want to tell you, you are making a big mistake. You are making a very big mistake. If you don't believe in anything, pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention, much attention to your dreams. It will tell you something. How you will be sleeping somewhere and you will see yourself somewhere. That should tell you there is something that you should believe. There is something your eyes cannot see, you should believe. Don't take it literal. If you don't believe in anything, please find someone who has been to coma before. Find someone who has been to coma before. Or find someone who has gone through operation for a very long time before. Or find someone who has come in contact face to face with death and she or she couldn't die. Find those people. Ask them questions. They will tell you what they saw. They will tell you their experiences. They will tell you their experiences. They will tell you their experiences. If you don't believe in anything, you are doing a very big mistake. You are doing a very, very, very big mistake. It is your choice not to believe in anything. But there is something. There is something. Let me give you instances. There is this woman who I know, like, I used to be in my platform, my WhatsApp group. She told me there's this girl, like, with her. And so many pastors or so many people are telling her, the girl is a witch or this thing, this thing, this thing. So she wants to find out. So there's this holy water I always prepare. I give her some, and I told her how to use it and what to use it for. And she used it to pray. The girl confessed. It is not a church, it is not a mosque, it's not a way. In their own house, the lady confessed, or the girl confessed to her that she is indeed a witch. We are the one behind her barrenness, all these things. And the, for her coming to stay with her is even a plan thing. They planned everything. And it's manifested, they planned everything spiritually. And it's manifested in the physical that the lady went to take her, come and stay with her with her so she confessed everything they've done to, to to her so the next day she called me and informed me i said okay because i want to meet the girl so she brought the girl the moment the lady or the girl saw me just like e, i know you and i said you've not met me before you've not seen me before where do you know me i said she know me spiritually she know me and i said okay but because the mother or the woman was there, so I didn't want to go deeper with, with her. So let's do what we're supposed to do, and that was all. That was it. I have a friend there eh, who is a childhood friend. They were playing football at a park, and someone, there was an air ball, so they jumped with the opponent. He and the opponent jumped, and the opponent used his boots to kick somewhere here, the abdomen. And that was the last thing he, he, he saw. He didn't see anything again. He collapsed and he was in coma for about three weeks. They took him to the hospital and they did some surgery on him. What he was telling me was, what he remember, yes, he, he went the, into the air and the kick came. And that was what he saw physically. He didn't see anything again. But from there, there was a process that his, his soul was going through. He said he saw uh, let's say a town or a country which was like a desert which was like a desert with nobody like it was a dry desert you can see one tree here you see another tree there like it is wide apart those trees were wide apart but when you see one person here you go you see another person like far wide apart and he met someone that he knew but the person was dead told him i am coming to receive you where are you going? They said, okay, let's go, you will see. But when they went, he was just receiving greetings from people he knew who were dead and people he did not know. Like, when everybody see him, they said, welcome. They say, will say, welcome. They will say, welcome. They will say, welcome. But most of the people he knew were all dead. And it was, the place was like a desert. So he was going, he was going, he was going, he was going. So he got to a place that he saw a lot of people that... He knew, but he couldn't remember any of them was alive. So they gave him water. As, as a messenger, when you go somewhere, they give you water. So as they gave him, like it was this, it was this because he was in coma for two 
to three weeks and he said they were going they were going they were like non-stop they were going meeting people non-stop so we go to a place like let's say his destination they gave him water like welcome water as he was about to drink it he had a, someone calling him and like what well, like it was like people were crying you could hear those words and his name from afar like a long distance to so us he heard the name he tried to like listen to who is calling him so he did not drink the water so he tried to turn his his face and look at the people calling him then he didn't see anything again from there that is when he woke up at the hospital that's when he woke up he realized there was so much pains at the prison he realized they've done a surgery on him so when he discovered it and i had a conversation with what with him that's what he told me that should tell you we are not alone so when you pass on from here there's somewhere you will go when you die it is not the end of you so you should be able to realize that when you lay down or you put your body down what is in you the way you go somewhere the moment you lay this body to the root the moment you lay this body to rest what is resting in you would also wake up and go to work so if you don't believe anything look for people who have been to coma before people who have come face to face with death before let me give you another uh this thing, scenario there was one woman also on my platform she called me and she was like she has someone a family member at the hospital and she has been there and we are treating her but it is not really improving so she need help so i told her to send me the picture of that woman or that relative so she sent me the picture to me on whatsapp and when i realized when i saw the picture i saw the body was down here and the soul was out of the body and the soul was suspended like few meters away from from the body so i called the woman i told her this your person is dead this your person is is is, is no more in the living she is dead they can't they can't treat her in the hospital she is gone there's nothing you can do to to to, to not survive it so i was i would be that time so after a few days they called me that she would want me to visit the patient at the hospital and i was busy i was i was traveling and working for people so i was busy for about two weeks when i got time what I'm saying, it happened at Kolebu. So when I got time, I go, I went there and I was told that the patient is always screaming, like saying she's seen a whole lot of animals, she's seen a lot of uh, mouse, cats, like kind of some kind of animals. And I said, oh, it is, it is not here. What she's seeing is not here. It is, she's already in the world, in between our world. So that's where she's seen. So what is she seeing? is very terrible and that is why she is not able to penetrate to go to where she's supposed to the soul is supposed to go so i prayed for her and i wrote some prayers on a sheet of paper and i gave it to her with some kind of prayers i gave it to her she for her to recite so it was hard for for for, for her to recite it but after reciting it i left there and in the evening i left there like let's say about 5 p.m then in the in the night i had a call from that woman again and she said the woman is gone the woman is dead and i said yes yeah, she'll go because she was not able to go that was why she was still in the hospital she was stuck because of where she would pass there were a lot of terrifying creatures there were a lot of horrible or scary creatures over there that was why the soul was not able to penetrate or go so after the prayers she will not see those kind of things again and those kind of creatures will not be able to touch the soul again so she will go straight wherever she's supposed to go so if you don't believe in anything my brother you are doing a very big mistake some of us grew up in the villages so we saw things but a lot of people who don't believe in anything were born in the cities and they never saw anything my name is servant here in heaven the servant of the most high the ancient breed Shalom. Love is my religion.